continuing with team capabilities roles and competencies we already discussed a little bit about the t-shaped pie-shaped and comb shaped and let's discuss a little more about it just to recollect t-shaped individuals are experts in one area for example they could be a programmer but they also have knowledge of other areas which also means some experience about other areas because they can stand in uh, to support the team when others are absent or they can uh, also participate or collaborate when discussing things which are common to the entire team for example estimation of a budget or estimation of timeline etc a pie shaped person is one who is strong in two areas and has knowledge of other areas just like the t shaped for the knowledge of the other areas which means a person could be a, a programmer as well as project manager and they have experience in both and they could contribute to creating excellent programs pro computer programs or software at the same time they may do a job of managing projects so if such individual is part of a, a larger group they may be able to contribute significantly to the progress of the project as well as technical aspects of the project a comb shaped person may be very rare because they need to be strong in more than two areas plus the knowledge of other areas and therefore this can come with a lot more experience in some cases it may not be essential also but maybe when there is a shortage of resources when there are less people available then if the same person is having several skills and expertise they can contribute a lot more however we need to be cautious that we are not overworking the person just because they have too many skills with them so the key message there is nowadays organizations because of the demands placed on them due to technology and customer demands they are looking for people to be at least t-shaped and if possible pie-shaped or comb shaped and maybe a repeat of something what i said before pie-shaped people were more senior people because they need experience to build up several skills um, in different domains and however right now even younger people as soon as they have finished their education have a bit of experience they are arriving with multiple skills in the initial years itself before they can they have gained a lot more experience and how is it possible it may depend on the educational culture it may depend on the the job challenges placed on them in the initial years of their experience itself rather than having to develop one skill after another um, over several years of experience one thing about these people who have multiple uh, skills either t-shaped or even pie or comb shape they need to be very curious unless there is curiosity they will not build skills in other areas in general also we are seeing nowadays also from the training programs what people are attending they're thinking about various things like should they go for ITIL training should they go for uh, tool training like service now should they go for project management agile training six sigma trainings lean trainings kanban and uh, several other things like information security information audits so they're thinking a lot about building several skills together at the same time uh, and skills meaning by learning about it by certifying in it and also getting some practice as soon as possible in different areas so they're looking for opportunities also uh, on one hand people are getting multi-skill on the other hand corporations and businesses have to offer jobs which allow them to practice those multiple skills and gain expertise as soon as possible so the message is being reinforced again and again that one needs to develop a broad set of competencies so that they can contribute to the business so that they can be better collaboration otherwise uh, an individual may assume that the, what the other person saying is correct and vice versa or maybe one department will assume that the other department what they are proposing is is fully true but if there is cross skilling and multiple skilling then they can challenge each other in a healthy way and build better collaboration for rapid progress of the business and for customer satisfaction how to develop broad set of competencies it can be done through training as we just uh, discussed specific trainings and job descriptions can be modified from the traditional ones to uh, new ones which can combine several um, 
roles or several job aspects into single description non it experience can also be considered traditionally we used to have people who are good in only one area either they are good in the service desk or um, they're good in release uh, software development and so on but we need to look at even non it experiences like are they are they good in team management can they do some procurement aspects etc how is their soft skills those soft skills have been in um, uh, been there existing since uh, decades but they are gained more importance in the recent years uh, for the sake of collaboration so even soft skills like communication leadership uh, will be included in job descriptions but i don't deny that we have been including this in job descriptions even traditionally so some of them you may have to take it with a pinch of salt that uh, but some of them may be totally new to develop for the modern digital service management performance management there has been a lot of changes here particularly because of the agile way of working rather than focusing on uh, individual rewards there is more focus on the team performance because in an agile team it's about how the every member is contributing to the team goals so if you're one hand if you award an individual for their individual contribution then it is in conflict with the working towards the common team goal so one needs to be very cautious the leadership has to be cautious in how do they what is the rewarding system versus what is the culture they want to promote if the rewarding system and the culture are in opposite direction then it's not going to work lots of opportunities which includes even proposing budgets business cases for training and development of all the employees or at least uh, several employees of the organization is also essential cpds are uh, interesting ones nowadays in the recent years continuing continuing professional development where uh, people demonstrate that they are not certified just one time or they're not learned something just one time they're actually continuing to practice it they need to show evidence that they have contributed to, to it by either um, practicing it at their off in their work or by uh, teaching it to others or by mentoring or coaching others or by writing articles publishing white papers contributing to the community in some way or another writing books and so on to obtain their uh, cpd credits or points role based yes job descriptions um, i think it goes both ways a single job can have several roles and a single role might require several skills sometimes therefore uh, it works this way also and what is the career path it can be sometimes confusing to employees that if they are doing multiple roles with multiple skills where exactly they are heading if all employees have multiple roles and skills and job description with a lot of roles and skills in demand then where exactly do they what is their destination exactly because previously i would think now i am a programmer then i become a team lead then i become a manager then a senior manager or a project manager or a program manager but now is it the same path or is it a different path and also what happens in flat organizations i'm an associate but the next step is the ceo or a vice president how is it possible so those are the the clarity to be provided by the human resource management uh, function competency models just like we looked at the lactm and uh, many other any other models in existence they need to be promoted and uh, employees need to be made aware of those models what competencies are required for which job descriptions hybrid roles i think we already looked at this a bit um, um to some extent already meaning multiple roles being done in a single job but also another thing here the competency is um, um can we use in a more creative manner combining the competency indicators with the role indicators and make it more creative for example in a role you may let's say a single role usually a single role might require a simple single competency profile but what if one role requires two competency profiles um yeah so if that is a situation like that then we have to do a lot more work in getting more clarity on combining these roles but maybe this is required only for a some specialized some rare job descriptions